For more than half the year, this sundial doesn't show the right time. That's because in many nations, the clocks spring forward by one hour from the end of March to the end of October. It's called daylight saving time and it affects more than one billion people. But recently, several nations have proposed scrapping it, including the European Union. So how did seasonal clock changes come about and should we be getting rid of them? In most countries, the standard time zone is generally in sync with the sun. For example, midday is roughly when the sun is highest in the sky, with equal amounts of daylight either side. But for about 70 countries around the world, this isn't the case for roughly half the year because of daylight saving time, which is the method of moving clocks forward during warmer months so that darkness falls at a later time. Towards the end of March, countries in the northern hemisphere set their clocks ahead by one hour to push sunsets later in the evenings and sunrises later in the mornings. Then in late October, they are wound back by an hour, subtracting an hour of daylight from the evening and making the early mornings brighter. In the southern hemisphere the reverse occurs, with their daylight saving time taking place during their summers. The idea of daylight saving was originally proposed by New Zealander George Hudson in 1895. He was a scientist studying insects and wanted to take advantage of the extra daylight in the summer to hunt for bugs. The idea didn't catch on at the time, but at the start of the 20th century, a successful British builder called William Willett published a pamphlet called The Waste of Daylight. Willett proposed moving the clocks forward by 80 minutes in 20-minute weekly increments. His campaign even gained the support of Winston Churchill, but Willett died in 1915 before his plans were realised. William Willett was a keen golfer and wasn't a fan of cutting short his round at dusk. He argued that several hours of sun were being wasted while we slept and that we should use more of it along with the nice summer weather to pursue leisure activities after work. However, when daylight saving was finally adopted, it wasn't to enjoy the long summer evenings. In 1916, Germany and the Austro-Hungarian Empire were the first countries to implement daylight saving during the First World War. The aim was that by adjusting the clocks forward, less electricity would be used for lighting, thereby conserving coal which could instead be used to power production towards the war effort. The UK followed suit a month later, while the US adopted it in 1918, which was claimed to have saved the United States $2 million in gas bills at the time, or around $33 million when adjusted for inflation. Turning on the lights an hour later may have saved a lot of energy a hundred years ago, but industrialization and technological advances mean that lighting is a smaller part of our overall energy consumption. A 2017 study found that moving an hour of daylight to the evening reduced electricity usage by an average of just 0.34%. Places further from the equator, which experienced the biggest change in daylight, were more likely to save energy with daylight saving. But this was offset by countries closer to the equator. Longer sunlit evenings in hot countries usually result in more time spent indoors, pushing up electricity consumption due to the need for air conditioning and the growing number of household electronics. The use of daylight saving continues to split opinion. Some countries are even divided about the annual ritual within their borders. In the US, Hawaii and Arizona, states that already get a lot of sunshine, are the only two that haven't adopted daylight saving. Within Arizona, however, it's even more confusing, as there are territories and reservations which don't have seasonal clock changes. There are also divides in Australia, where three out of the eight states have not adopted daylight saving. Brazil, where daylight saving is only used in the south of the country, which lies furthest from the equator. And Canada, where the province of Saskatchewan doesn't have seasonal clock changes, unlike the rest of the country. But the European Union is planning to keep things simple by getting rid of daylight saving altogether. In 2019, the European Parliament voted to scrap daylight saving time across all member states from 2021 following a poll that showed EU residents were keen on the move. However, supporters and critics of seasonal clock changes are divided about its effects. For instance, daylight saving reduces road traffic accidents, which are more likely to occur after dark by an estimated 13% in pedestrian fatalities and 3% fewer deaths among those travelling in vehicles. However, a study in the US found that during the week immediately after the clocks go back in the fall, there is an uptick in fatal car crashes by 6%. Research has also shown that immediately after the clocks go forward in spring, the risk of heart attacks and strokes grows by 24%, which some attribute to the loss of an hour of sleep. Conversely, when the clocks go back in autumn, the risk falls by 21%. And a study of people diagnosed with depression found that the end of daylight saving time saw an 11% increase in depressive episodes, thought to be caused by disruption to sleep patterns and darker evenings. Studies also suggest that daylight saving causes a fall in evening TV 
viewership and increased physical activity. The brighter evenings are also popular with retail businesses as it encourages people to shop more in the sunlight. According to opinion polls, it's not the distribution of daylight hours that voters resent, but rather the one-hour transition itself, which many see as inconvenient. In both the US and the UK, surveys suggest significant opposition to the changing of the clocks. The further you travel from the equator, the greater the change in daylight hours between seasons, and the significance of the impact of daylight saving increases. However, for those countries furthest from the equator, cutting short the mornings of already very short days in the winter would be extremely unpopular. Although the EU switch away from seasonal clock changes has been postponed due to the pandemic, the decision taken in the European Parliament suggests the move will happen soon. With around 80% of the global population not using daylight saving time and many of the original reasons for implementing the change no longer relevant, the clock appears to be ticking for daylight saving. Hi guys, thanks for watching our video. We'd love for you to subscribe, but before you do that, we want to know your thoughts on daylight saving. Does it benefit you or does it hinder you? Do you get one more hour of sleep or do you have to go to school in the dark? Comment below the video to let us know and we'll see you next time.